to pretend because it'd be the delay, and all of a sudden, you know. Then we're on. Then, then we're, we're on. When are we actually on? Like uh, now, we are on now, Scott, and we're saying things that everybody can hear. Wait, really? Yes. Dang it! Hello, guys. Oh. Chalu. I see. Are we on or not? We are on. Hey, hey, everyone. Hello. Welcome to the Ask Me Anything with Mike Myers, the Wednesday show, coming live. <laughs> Streaming live from our orbital HQ at Total Seminars. That's right. This is one fully functional battle station. <laughs> I felt a disturbance Ooh. in this force, like oh. millions of people crying out and suddenly becoming silent. Is that what? Because Zach just showed up? Is Zach? <laughs> Who's Zach? Uh, I like Zach's my favorite Welshman. Yeah. <laughs> or. Your favorite cockney. Okay. Oh, I know. I'm just. I, it's like doing Andre telling you he's from Belgium. It's just. It just gets funnier the more I right, abuse it. We all know he's from Luxembourg. All right. First of all, hey. First of all, everybody, can you hear me? Can you hear the mounds, words coming out of my mouth? William Jeske, Red Five, standing by. There you go. How hard is it? I throw out a little Star Wars quote, and I just ask like one person. Thank you, William. You know what's the big deal? Patricia Grace, the hat makes me expect to see Mike drinking, dancing later. <laughs> <laughs> well, Patricia, if you insist. <laughs> so I am, I am not mic'd up today. So I'm going to be a, the quiet shadow in the background. Mm. You right. can even hear that. Yeah, I, no one has actually typed in, we can hear you. So I'm in a panic. <laughs> I've got a bad air. Now, now they're all coming up with Star Wars quotes. All right, I think it's all regulars here. So, Jairo, Jairo Nunez. Okay, sounds funny. There we go, guys. How, how hard was that? All right, here we go. You ready? Hi, everybody. My name is Mike Myers, and welcome to the Wednesday edition of the Mike Myers live stream of Ask Mike Anything. The goal of this live stream is to provide those of us who are isolated by the coronavirus an opportunity to continue our studies for CompTIA certifications. We concentrate primarily on uh, IT Fundamentals, A+, Network+, and Security+, but we can certainly move out of that as an as-needed basis. So... The motif is simple here. You type questions into the live chat, and then I answer them. I've got Scott Jernigan here with me today, and uh, he thinks he's getting scale. <laughs> <laughs> Union wages. No, Union. You, he said you wanted a big celery. Oh, no. It just never, I, it just never stopped being funny. I love that joke. <laughs> you know? Or when I said, I will give you 5,000 dollars. And Look, I said, yes, thank you, Mike, that's like, great. I don't even remember what dollars are from. It's like Peruvian or, I you know, know something like that. But it was about $3.22. And it's some <laughs> naval lint. <laughs> uh, Vaslin Litoff is here. We got Stevie J. I don't know, maybe look at us. Jose, hey. Jose Braden, he's on two in a row. I know, right? Somebody write down the date and time, man. I'm going to play lottery. <laughs> you know? See what happens here. I like it. So anyway, we are uh, on the, uh, the, the set where we're sh working hard to uh, get the videos for the one, at least the ones I'm shooting for Security Plus 601. Mm -hmm. uh, Dan Lachance, Lachance, am I saying Lachance. that? You know, he's, he's, he, well, he's from Newfoundland. Is he really French? I don't think anybody in Newfoundland is French. Yeah, I don't think so. You know, you, I mean, you got to get to Quebec before you find the Quebecois. May we? May we? Don't, don't make. I said that once in front of some gal who spoke perfect French. She goes, ah, oh, he was Quebecois. She's like, what? I was like laughing. I was like, I thought I sounded good. And now. Oh. And then he didn't. So there you go. Yeah, Therese, Teacher Russell, I'll take a big Bloody Mary with that big celery. Right? There's, right. A, there's a place for you in my organization. <laughs> At Andrew Parrish, 2.04 p.m. Hey, cool, curly-haired dude. I don't think he's talking to me. I don't think so. I think he's actually talking about my Ralph Lauren shirt. Yeah, I mean, we used to call I them really, polo shirts, I know, but, you I know, know. I'm actually wearing one. I mean, anything that starts with Ralph is never a good idea, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you know, Ralph Diamonds. You know, so, Jairo Nunez says he sent you an email. And I assume it's Jairo. I'm going with Jairo. You sent me an email? I literally just checked. Uh, hang on, I'm going to turn it off. 
See, the problem is I don't, oh, wait a minute, here it is, here it is. Well, there you go. Oh, hi, yes, yeah, so Hiro, I don't know if you remember on Monday, mm -hmm. uh, this was the gentleman, uh, I'm assuming it is a male, I have no proof of that. Um, they, CS degree, some work as software developer, wants to do a career path, and don't have any IT experience, every company I applied to reject my application. Uh, okay, so Hiro, a couple of things I'm gonna tell you. Yeah, no, Hiro, I got it, I got it, okay. First thing I'm gonna tell you is, there's absolutely no problem switching. Uh, there are tons of people with computer science degrees who get out of coding and go into more systems, more architecture, more administrative, all kinds of routes like that, and there is not a limitation. So when every company that I applied to rejects my application, that's telling me you're applying to the wrong companies. Uh, I would like to see who you're applying to and what kind of jobs you're applying for. Uh, I think you would be surprised with a computer science degree, especially with software development. You right. could project management would be an obvious direction to go through. Sure. Uh, so uh, let's see if uh, Hi Rogue, I, uh, I want to know who you're, uh, uh, what type of jobs you're applying for, and you live in California. Good lord! Just well, go north to Northern California, where the jobs are. Oh, there's no jobs in Southern California? There are a bazillion jobs in Southern oh, okay, California. Okay, yeah, I was going to say. Uh, of course, why do you live in California? But I'm not going to get into... I, I know, I know, I know. Hold up, hold up. You mean the, the number two paradise on Earth? California? I guess whatever you want after Houston is up to you, buddy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. No, we're all moving where Tullowit is, because that's the real paradise on Earth. Oh! The number two would be Southern California. Yeah. Just no. It, both places that I enjoy visiting, I won't lie. But uh, you know, you know, ask Tolawood how much money he's paying for a gallon of gas. <laughs> oh, oh this Scott's Wait. like, well, I have an electric car. All right, whatever <laughs> math, you know, it's like, that's, give me a break, Jernigan. Oh, now, hang on, we got somebody oh. speaking Spanish here, uh -oh. Scott. Uh -oh. Right at the beginning, David Rush. Wait, Dave, Dave Rush speaking Spanish? Mi lapis rojo tiene un gran bigote. My... Pencil? Me, la, pencil? Yeah. My red me, me pencil me. has a big, I don't know what bigote is. <laughs> has a... My red pencil <laughs> has oh, God. un gran... No, no, don't, don't go there. <laughs> mustache. Mustache? Well, thank you, Dave. I'm glad to hear that your red pencil has a big mustache. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, I know enough Spanish. I thought it was mustachio. Yo tengo un mustachio y muy grande. Uh, yeah, yeah. Bigote. Bigote. And we're going to have to talk to actually one of my buddies who actually speaks proper Spanish. I'm curious about that one. All right. Anybody actually speak Spanish? Because I know Dave doesn't. Maybe speaks Arabic. Because he spent more time in uh, Saudi than... The Arabic, rest. Spanish. What's the difference? Right? Yeah. I mean, if we're going to be an American, let's act like an American. Oh, my gosh. You're, Americans. You've heard the old joke, who's somebody who's, what's a, what do you call a person who speaks two languages? Bilingual? This is right, okay. safe. All right, all right, all right. What do you call a person who speaks three languages? Trilingual? Trilingual, that's right. What okay. do you call a person who speaks one language? Lingual? American. Oh, God. <laughs> Oh, boy. Oh, boy. And of course, we got our video production manager, Shannon, in the back, <laughs> literally laughing. feeding you the answers to this stuff. Give me a break. Your, 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 your red pencil has a big mustache, too. Where is my red pencil? Yeah, with the mustache. I'm going to put little mustaches on. Well, I'm going to put big mustaches. Well, did he say That's big? That's what I should do. I should do a mustache on my mask, and then you guys would not actually think or know that I was wearing a mask. Didn't it work that way? Yeah, that's it's exactly it. You got it. <laughs> All right. So, do we have questions? Or where are we? I, I haven't. I have not seen any questions yet. Patricia Grace is curious about my hat. The hat expect Mike to see Mike dancing later. It's a Tam O'Shanter. Oh, here. I'm gonna try not to die. Ah. <laughs> uh. Aww. Which one do you want to wear? Tiara. There you go. Aww. It's a tiara. I get to wear my little princess hat. You look like a pretty princess. It almost works on you. That's the terrifying part. 
<laughs> Our video. <laughs> See, I told, I told him. I said it, it works for him, and he's like, "Oh, maybe I'll keep this on for I'll a while." Keep it on. Well, you know, Mike said I look my good. Pretty, my pretty princess. You know, <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, yeah. I haven't had my hair cut since God was a teenager, but yeah, you know. What are you talking about? What the heck? <laughs> I mean, you look like you know what you look like right now. You like in the Three Stooges when they do a big act and all their hair's all messed up. Yeah. You kind of okay. got. You kind of look like curly. No, yeah. not. No, not Curly. Curly was, had no hair. Who was the one? Not the boss, Mo. Not Curly. Like, uh, <laughs> not Shemp. Come on, you know. No, Curly. Mo. Curly, Mo. Larry. Who? Larry. Larry. All right, there we go. <laughs> See, I told you you could leave her in here. Right? Can't I you, tell you, what? you think she's just a pretty face. She's, she's smart, too. <laughs> All right, not Battle Station, but Death Star. Okay, a nice hat, Mike. I've got a bad feeling about this. Sound is fine. I can hear you. We can hear you here. Yes. Uh, I'm giving stuff away today because this is silly that uh, we've got 37 people online so far. 36, we just lost one. Somebody's sitting on there. He's like, he's not giving anything away. Click. <laughs> Manny Mo, no, tell it, not Manny Mo and Jack. Wrong. Wrong group. How would he know what who Manny Moe and Jack is? Well, because Pet Boys is probably there in Hawaii, too. Pet Boys. Na, na, na. Noctis uh, 205. I'm trying to get caught up. Uh, to, Noctis in, Interfector. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> I know a Noctis, so we got a little Latin going here. Interfect. I'm just not even going to touch it. Good afternoon, Mike. Nice hat. Thank you, Noctis. Do you still have Toe Almighty Mike Stromy hat? The. the. Do I have the Mike Stromy hat somewhere? Uh, I don't know where it is, but I know. I oh, where it's in your closet. So it's in that closet. <laughs> no, no. So guys, we, uh, we 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 abandoned the office when COVID kicked in over a year ago, and uh, we're just back. Uh, it was last week I started to come back. It was last week. Last week. Yep. And uh, yeah, so we're everything's a mess. We're working on it. It is. It is. There is literally what an inch of dust on my desk, and on my monitors. And uh, is it? Yeah. Oh yeah. No, it's it's nasty in there. So we had to shoot some uh, videos at. There's a uh, outdoor auditorium called Miller Outdoor Theater here in Houston. We had to reshoot some shots ah, for okay. Security Plus, sure. and. Uh, the, the dust on the chairs at Miller Outdoor Theater. I sat back with one of my shirts and pants on, oh, no. and everybody's like, you know when you got literally the entire crew and they're all trying to smack your butt at the same time? There's so much <laughs> dust on you. you know, people are looking like, going, oh my God! Why so, is that man all half gray? And so many things are getting undusted again, you know? Mm, yes. Up oh, here we go, hang on, we got a real question from 207 from Crazy Homebody Girl. Okay. Can you explain the difference between sandboxing and containerization? Can you? Yeah. Uh, so they're different animals, although, well, let's get two definitions because you can put these together, all right? Um, so crazy homebody girl. Remember, so sandboxing usually means to set aside a system for uh, either testing or, uh, yeah, so it's usually a kind of a testing type system. Okay. So it's a sandbox. You try to recreate real world environment as best you can, but it is separate and safe. That's why it's called a sandbox. Okay. Okay. Um, so that's part of the software development cycle. It's a pretty common thing to do um, here at Total Seminars. We have, a, we have an entire server that we keep up and running just, just for... Just as a sandbox. Yeah, just as a sandbox for whatever we want to do. Now, containerization is the process of virtualizing an operating system. So when you're developing a program, okay. and uh, usually an, a web app of some form, you know, you can put all of your executables or at least your interpreted files in there, any libraries, anything you want like that, mm -hmm. without actually messing with your real libraries on, on a real system. Right. Uh, so containerization is a great thing, and pretty much uh, all web development work these days is probably done using containers. Um, 
So there would be a part in the, in the development process where we're testing stuff, and instead of taking a container and deploying it to the actual server that would then run it, right. we deploy it to a sandbox server, a test server, a developmental server, whatever it might be, just to make sure it works without blowing up, you know, Timbuktu or whatever. So containerization is a methodology for virtualizing an operating system so that development tools can work within it. And a sandbox is a, is a test area. So in, 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 the, in, in, in web app development, you're probably starting with containers almost from the beginning. I guess you'd probably do some initial development work right. without them. But uh, once you actually have something that can run, you probably are running a container. So different animals, although we would definitely use some container while we're sandboxing. Right. Has, has uh, Dave Russ tried to backpedal on his uh, mustache uh, yet? Uh, not yet. Mm. Uh, you missed my tiara, Alex. Just saying. Come on, put it on just for the Italians. There you go. Here. Scott's farting around here, and I'm the one who's got to be digging up questions I may have missed. That's right. No, I got it. I got. I, I just, no, but, no you, you're, you're, you've had a hard day. I, Take it uh, easy, there, buddy. <laughs> Good God. <laughs> oh, I have to turn my sound off. Hold on. It's hard to be me. It is hard to be me. Uh, but up. Um, Steve J. Back at uh, 2:08 p.m. Two dollars and fifty cents in New York. So you guys know that we make the gasoline here in Texas, and uh, our gas prices have spiked up pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. Well, which I'm kind of happy because I own Exxon stock, but... Uh, and I'm happy because I drive an electric car. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, you know what I'm going to get you? I'm going to get you a Mr. Fusion. Do you remember that? No. Uh, Back to the Future. Oh. In the original Back to the Future, at the end, where Doc comes back, and he runs over to the garbage can and grabs some coffee grounds and banana peels. He opens up the, the car and starts shoving it all into the Mr. Fusion reactor. I gotcha. Okay. So he was powering up his car with banana peels. That's My God, that would be funny. That, that. Another million dollar idea. You just sell little fake Mr. Fusions that you can hook to like two liter bottles and... What does this have to do with CompTIA certification? Like? Absolutely nothing. Well, okay. Then. Much like the questions and statements here have nothing to do with CompTIA. <laughs> Thank God for crazy homebody girl, because everybody else is like, oh, we're talking about li liquor and alcohol and red mustaches or something like that. Right. Uh, -dum -bum 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 -bum. So, 211. Uh, Patricia, no. <laughs> I'm not going to clip it so it stays No, locked. wait a minute. I got. Uh, uh. I have compliments here. Oh, okay. Sorry. Stevie J at 207. Wow, having spent the first half of my career in broadcast radio, I must say, Mike, you've got a great voice for it. It's, wait, I can do this. It's bing bong, five minutes past the big hour of five o'clock here. Tonight's forecast is dark. <laughs> With a shade of overcast. <laughs> in the early morning hours. Oh, Thank you, Stevie J. I appreciate that. Hiro Nunes, four dollars and thirty cents for gas. Yeah, that, that. So no matter how much we complain about gas, Tolowit will be able to beat us. Mm. Andrew Parrish at two oh nine. Hey Mike, I have my A plus studying for Net Plus. As I am now, as I am now, is it possible to get promoted beyond a help desk role at work? Even if he's going to another company? Absolutely. Uh, Andrew. There's tons of people who will use uh, certifications to help them get entry-level jobs that are not in help desk. Help desk tends to be a common place that a lot of people go. But I got to tell you, help desk can also be a dead-end street. It's not the kind of thing that I think you should stay in for, say, more than a year, unless you're actually moving up in management within help desk. Okay. Uh, right. Because you can get locked into it. Uh, William Jeske, what's the polygot equivalent for someone who can code in more than one language? Ambi... <laughs> Ambi-languageable? <laughs> Hasn't been on a date in a while? Multi-programmable, I don't know. <laughs> Lives in the basement. No, I, uh, no first of all... Absolutely. 
Well, well, Michael Smyer, who I, I works for Total Seminars, uh, Michael can code in a number of different languages, yeah. and he can code at a like a get paid level. Right. I can write out "Hello World" honestly in about ten languages right now. I can um, do it in English. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Hola Mundo. No, that's Moon. Why did the Mundo's wor world. La Luz. La Luz. The Luz is Moon. La Luz. Mm. Okay. Wow. So, Andrew, the important thing is, is translate here. Yeah, it's all right. I'm still worried Google Translate is going to, there's going to be some earthy description of what was bigote. Bigote. Okay. So Dave Brush. And we're going to like back. get, we're going to get Dave, bumped from YouTube. Hold on. Dave Brush came back and he's like, I'm sticking with it. It means a big mustache. As in like a big mustache. Wow. That is a big mustache there. <laughs> I would share my screen, but I can't, so there you go. No, tomorrow, Andre. I get my second shot tomorrow. So, a couple oh. more weeks, we're in the mask. <laughs> I'm sitting here looking. Everybody's like, Larry, Larry, Larry. I'm like, what? Oh, the Three Stooges thing. Yep, yeah, yeah. Well, okay. Andrew Hutz. Are there scenarios where Diffie-Hellman is preferable to RSA and vice versa, or is it more of a dealer's choice scenario? Well... Diffie-Hellman Diffie uh, can, be, can have problems because the nonce value that gets transferred is relatively small. So if a person could somehow intercept a Diffie-Hellman uh, negotiation, okay. there'd be a potential for problems. And keep in mind, we're not talking about web pages. On secure web pages, so if, if you do have a web page that's still using Diffie-Hellman, which is rare, uh, they're also probably going to be using elliptical curve or something else as part of it. So uh, Diffie-Hellman is only one small part of the whole thing. Uh, where, where you're going to see Diffie-Hellman, if, if you want me to predict where we're going to be able to crack WPA3, all right, this is me predicting. All right. And that is when you have the simultaneous authentication of equals. If you guys don't know, with WPA3, the, the newer... Uh, wireless encryption standard, uh, there is no personal shared key anymore, right? So it's just going to be simultaneous authentication of equals. And a big part of SAE is using Diffie-Hellman as an initial tool set to spin up a key to be shared. Okay. Uh, but I'm concerned uh, that even with the values they're using, that it is going to be possible because Diffie-Hellman is always has some degree of risk of repeating itself, whereas you'd never really see that with RSA, okay. certainly never see it with ECC, that uh, there, there could be a crack. At this point in the game, it's like saying you can crack AES. Nice words, but probably can't happen. But Man, I got to tell you, with WPA3, it literally all of my hacking tools for wireless are gar they're junk. Out the window. They're garbage. Defenestration. Defenestration. Throw, thrown through the window. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> WPS. <laughs> so, you know, WPS really is trivial to crack, right? It is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you'd say, well, I'll just, you know, somebody's using something I can't crack. I'll just use WPS. Well, first of all, w, WPA3 says there is no more WPS. Okay. If you want to have a WPA3 uh, wireless access point or whatever, you ain't doing that. It's not even a part of it. But the other thing is that I discovered when I was, I mean, theoretically, if I were saying I was trying to crack. Because we wouldn't actually do that for real. Oh, I know. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> is uh, starting about four or five years ago, a lot of the routers, or, or you know, most of these home routers, which is I, what I tend to run into more than anything else, is they will have uh, the, the first attempt to get in on, D on WPS. If it's wrong, it starts to set a, a little timeout. So the first timeout's 10 seconds, the next one's 30 seconds, mm -hmm. and then at a certain point it's like five minutes, and it's like, you know, even if there is, you know, less than 10,000 permutations, I can't, you know, with the timeout. So yeah, okay. and they're making All it right. pretty tricky. All good. Larry Fine, man, look at this. I know, people, people definitely have responses. So Andrew Hutz, there is no situation where if you have a choice between Diffie-Hellman and RSA, I'm not aware of a situation where Diffie-Hellman would be better. You know, the trick is Diffie-Hellman is always good enough, right? I mean, you know, because of course Diffie-Hellman doesn't provide uh, authentication, right? It's okay. uh, so, 
Uh, all the, the only thing that Diffie-Hellman does well is that with a l small amount of configuration, we can pass a symmetric key without anybody knowing it. Okay. RSA is, is a full-blown kind of encryption. Diffie-Hellman really isn't an encryption, if you really want to argue about it. Do I? Do I really want to argue about it? And you do. Okay. Diffie-Hellman is a key exchange protocol. It's not an encryption. Okay. Andrew Parrish wants a Pizza Hut e-gift card. I'm not sure we can do that. Our marketing department would probably... Uh... <laughs> that would be fun, or people would enjoy it, or we could bring more people in. Good God, don't do that. Don't do that. No, no. Are you having fun? No? Okay, good. <laughs> no fun for you, and no freebies. Oh. I tell you what. Cyber Warrior says hello. Jason Helms, hello. Good to see everyone. Hang on, so Andrew Hutz, would a virtual machine be a good choice for practicing pen testing and testing homemade pen testing tools, or would that be too easy? No, it, no it's actually absolutely what you need to do. Mo most, pen, most of the capture the flag things I see are usually under some VM that's been right. hardened one way or another. Right, uh, and that's, that's the way you, I mean, that's the way you both harden the system and then test your skills, right? And test your... Well, first of all, I wouldn't want to, <laughs> can you imagine coming to your house and setting up a, like a Windows server, and then you want to try practice pen testing it, and you like torque out a real Windows server, you know? But what do you mean you deleted the Windows folder, you know, that kind of a thing? Uh, yeah. I yeah, no, you definitely want to do it in a VM. That's a very good thing. Uh, Cyber Patriot, all of those competitions are done in VMs, all of them. So, cool. yes, do it, do it in a VM. That is the way to do it, Andrew. And it wouldn't be too easy. There's nothing easy about a VM compared to bare metal. Gotcha. So, Jairo Nunez, to answer your question, Mike, I'm applying all over the USA. Okay, well, first of all, Jairo, you, you applied in Houston and didn't get a job offer? I, I literally, when I hear about somebody who has a computer science degree, and they're not getting a job offer. I'm starting to go. High road, did, <laughs> I, 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 don't, I, don't. I want to see how you dress. I mean, no offense, buddy, but uh, there is a massive backlog of of, of work right now. A, a huge demand. High road. High road. I'm gonna here. In fact, Scott, talk to the people. I'm gonna. I got. I'm gonna send High something real quick. Okay. So High road, Mike is gonna send you. I think uh, a response to your email. Well, more than that. Oh. <laughs> oh, this could be interesting. Uh, what do we have? Uh, yes. Hi, Ro, check your email. There are actually a couple of AMAs on um, getting a job, uh, including very specific ones with uh, Jessica Dickerson from back in May? When was Jessica's? It may have been even earlier than that. In fact, Jessica. I think, so we, we have Dave Rush working in the background as well, who will post up a link for the uh, getting a job in, in IT security, um, that AMA specifically. And then we also had. Resume building. We did a bunch of different yeah, things. We've yeah, we've done several. So just. Go to the Total Seminars channel on YouTube and do it. Do a search. There's a little like a uh, whatever that stupid little thing is. Ball peen hammer. I live for pregnant. I live for pregnant pauses, man. <laughs> Don't do that. Yeah, so search here on the Total Seminars channel, and th there's some great stuff in there. Uh, but uh, Jaime, I, I, Jaime, sorry. Uh, Hi, Ro. Hi, Rum. Hi, Ro. Hi, Ro. Hi, Ro. I just responded back and uh, I, on, to your email. And, and, and he just got it. So awesome. Awesome. Victor at 228. Big thank you, Mike, for your videos, books to help me get my net plus. Well done. Hey. So you're going A plus for after net plus. Okay. You know, some people do it a little differently than others, Mike. This is true. I got my IT fundamentals after I got my A plus, net plus, and security plus. But you're crazy like or that. There was a book. You're Mr. Oh, Vegas. No. <laughs> you're a crazy country. Ah, the sounds of the toilet flushing. Ah, yes. 
Let's do a comp. Sweet sound. Let's do a let's do a competition. It's a slow day. Yeah, we'll do a slow day. Yeah, let's do. Do you guys want a competition? Do you want to actually like a chance for some free practice questions? Of course they do. All right, what wacky. Do do? I'm trying to dig. I, I want to do Network Plus. So while Mike is looking up a question, let me just explain the competitions to those of you who are new. Um, they're not fair. Absolutely not fair. Um, when you type in an answer, you need to type in an actual answer, not just a, a, a letter choice. And three, um, the person who wins is whoever shows up first in my feed. And if you are in Hawaii, you're not going to be first when somebody's in Austin, Texas, because I'm in Houston. So answer quickly, and we'll go with it. And if you, if you want to just answer the question because you're competitive and having fun and don't want the prize, just let us know. Okay, cool. Those are the rules. Did I get them all? You did good. Oh, I did well. Come on, Mike. I have an editor. <laughs> Grammar are dead. <laughs> One of these days we're actually going to... Oh my God, I got this right the first try. All right, so this is actually a good question. Uh, oh, actually a good question. Well, no, I mean, they're all good questions, of course, but <laughs> this one's more gooder. Oh, God. What are you uh, saying? Man? Give me strength. Oh, God, here we go. Okay, I got to try to make this actually work. Hold on a minute. Great. Okay, here we go. All right, guys, here's the question. So I need you to select three of these. I got it right the first time. I'm, I'm impressed, Mike. Oh, that thank you actually you. answered a Network Plus question correctly. It's true, I tell you. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to leave this up here for a moment. Remember, you can't just write A, B, C, D, or E. You have to write at least enough out so I know which one you're talking about. I used to let people just write the letters of the alphabet, Scott. You know what they did? They just wrote the letters of the just alphabet. Just wrote the letters of the alphabet. Yeah, of course, because, you know, literally just A, B, C, D, E. Hey, is anybody in the studio? I don't think so. They all left? Yep, I think they, I think they bailed on us. I needed some more of these West Indies goods. Need more coffee? Yeah. Do you mind? I don't mind. I'm gonna. Oh, oh, oh you need to you need to be looking at this feed then. Mm -mm. I'm leaving it up here, guys. I want everybody to have a shot. Ooh, everybody's just like, oh, we got to think about this one. <laughs> now, guys, there's three answers. I need three. All right. I am going to make my best shot at answering this. All right, so let's see. Bring up the assistance window. All right, so please select your answer. Uh, control access to appropriate users. That's got to be one. Okay, I got one out of three. Deleting full logs. We do not want to delete full logs. Deleting non-critical entities from log files. I, that, I'm not sure why I would do that. Manage size. That's certainly one of them. And storage for legal conform, conformance. Did that, do you just invent a word, conformance? <laughs> All right, so I say it's control access to appropriate users, manage size, store, help me find somebody there. So okay. control right. access for appropriate viewers. I believe I saw. Uh, wearing appropriate, no, okay, no. Was there a Carla Rain? Nope, there was a Carla Rain, but didn't get the annex. Wait, it's, I think it's Patricia Grace, look. Curl access, manage size, storage for legal. Also clipboard and pen. She can add that part, that's fine. All right, I think we got a winner here, man. And, and we, know from, we know from previous times, Patricia's not gonna say no. So 
Awesome. Congratulations, Patricia. <laughs> what, what are you saying about Patricia there, buddy? Oh, oh, I'm not saying anything. <laughs> you so said it. Oh, my God. Sorry, Patricia. Mike. Scott's, Scott doesn't think in those terms, but I do. I do not. <laughs> you're, you're, you're just like a nice guy. I am that, Mike. I Teacher really, Russell, I really am. conformance is a perfectly cromulent word. <laughs> I like it. I think he's an obsequious pop and jay. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you say, sir. There he is, quite. All right, so anyway, so we have a winner here. All right, so congratulations. Who was it again? Patricia. All right, Patricia, you're the winner. In order to claim your prize, you got to send an email to Kathy Y at Total7.com. That's Kathy with a K, K A T H Y Y at Total7.com. Remember, make sure to give your YouTube name. You got to send this email to Kathy Y, add your YouTube name, tell her which product you want, A plus, Net plus, or Security plus, and then please give Kathy a couple of weeks. She's a busy, busy lady, and we're just a little mom and pop organization here. We do the best we can. He's mom, I'm pop. Oh, wait. What? No. I'm a Never. bad mother. <laughs> Stop. I'm talking about Shaft. Oh, man. And we can dig it. <laughs> I'm singing a song from a movie. I know. I know. <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> we got the, oh, my God, did I, did, am I going to get canceled? <laughs> 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 Tell me you don't fear that a little bit. You don't. Like, Fear getting canceled? Me? Uh, Mr. Never says anything inappropriate? Uh, I do. I'm, I'm just waiting. <laughs> you know, years ago, I got a complaint once. I was making it on a video. I was talking about some Bubba. And I got a, a, a mail from a reader in California who was telling me that I was being insensitive to Bubba's. Seriously. But we, we live in Texas. We can actually make fun of people like this. This is going to have them killed. <laughs> <laughs> Lightly. <laughs> right? All right, so congratulations, Patricia. And she, she's not going to bail out no, on you. All right, okay. All right, so if we do another competition, it's going to be equally challenging. Or equally silly. So there you go. That was a good one. That was a good one, actually. That was very good. I like that. That was a good question. All right. Ba -dum -ba -dum. <laughs> I have completely lost the thread of questions, though. Who said that? What? I have. Me. I just said that. I've lost Here, the thread. Zach Morrill. You can't get canceled for swearing. Yeah? Because <laughs> Zach would have already been canceled on Discord <laughs> a lot. He, he, would, he would have been canceled and buried in a bog. <laughs> They'd have found him 600 years later with red hair. <laughs> wait, wait. All the bog people have red hair. No, they don't. Well, they didn't when they went in the bog. But now they do. There's some aspect of the of the what's oh it peat, gosh. the peat, that uh, turns their hair red. And, Seriously. And, and you can turn it into scotch. I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah, that's always what always worried me about that. You know, so these people are drinking scotch and it's like it's peaty scotch. I'm like, I could be drinking the residue of somebody who had their throat slit and shoved in this bog back in 625 A.D. Mm, it tastes delicious. This Lager villain's amazing. What's your secret? <laughs> sprinkle a little bog body in there. And don't forget your toenail sprinkles. Wow. Okay. We just went very dark. I'm not getting ignore any questions. Him. Ignore him. I'm not getting any questions, man. So I'm oh, going that's to. True. That's I'm true. I'm going, you know. Or we're going to end super early today. And I drove all the way down here to the studio just to answer your question. So that's my choice. I can either shut down early or I got a feeling that my buddy Alex will come through with some questions. I, I think she has some questions. Absolutely. Uh, oosh. <laughs> uh. And Andrew's, Andrew's like, no, wait, 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 don't quit. <laughs> I've got questions. <laughs> yeah, he says that now. Oh, gosh, okay. Okay, I'm at the... So, Kim Jong Oof, the next competition we have today will be an A plus question, just for you. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and cue that up while. Okay. So, just for the people viewing, uh, unlike the usual thing where I'm at home uh, and have more than one monitor uh, and have the live feeds on various <coughs> things, right now I'm I'm looking at the live feed only on my laptop at the very end. So we are, uh, if we skip a question, um, type it again. 
Yeah, just type yeah, it again. Type it's it again. Especially if we start rattling on like this, you know, Scott just, you know, he's got control issues, so. Okay, and Andrew, Andrew, uh, Dave is telling us that Andrew has asked quite a few questions. So I will, I will scroll back up, which is a dangerous proposition in YouTube. Go for it, man. I'm going for it. I'm going. I'm just queuing up A-plus questions. Okay, all right, sounds good. Uh, oh, uh, at 2.30, Dave Rush posted the Jessica Dickerson uh, Q&A. If you don't, uh, all right, two things about the chat. One, you have an option to, to be on uh, talk chat or live chat, right? It's a the drop down arrow at the top. Be on live chat because otherwise you're going to miss a whole bunch of stuff. And the second thing is there's a vertical ellipses. That's three dots, one on top of the other. Um, where you can select and toggle on the timestamps for the, the feed. So when we are addressing questions, we'll say, oh, I'm at 2.30, I'm at 2.15. So if, if I, I say something like I'm 2.45 and you're like, oh, but my question was asked, that means we missed it. So post it again. All right. So. It sounds like you're ready to do another competition. No, I, I'm, I've got Not it yet. queued up. Okay, all right, all right. We'll, we'll, we'll get there. Andrew, I want to compete. Uh, ha, 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 ha. Oh, man, here we go. I'm going to do... Uh, so have I ever done Capture the Flags? I have helped teams do Capture the Flag. We have a popular program here in the United States called Cyber Patriot, mm -hmm. although I haven't done it in a couple of years, to be honest with you. Well, at least a year. Uh -huh. <laughs> more, a little more than anything in a year. But, but uh, Cyber Patriot uh, works. They have middle school, high school, and college. Nice. And uh, it's a pretty amazing program. Okay. And I've done, I've done the, but that's the last time I've done any Capture the Flag stuff. All right. All right. Well, my question, Grandpa, is Kim Jong, Kim Jong Oof at 241. Oh, I'm scrolling. 241. Okay, I'm, I'm way, way, way back. Well, then go. Hold on. Find where we're at. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna grab what okay, questions right. show up. Go ahead. All right. Uh, Evan Doublefeld, Mike Myers, Kim Jong Oof. Uh, Hiro Nunes, is there any difference between USB C and Thunderbolt cable? Physically, no. Yeah. No. Same. Same connector. And almost the same signal, very, very close to the same signal. Very subtle differences. Um, so all the way back, Andrew, the first at 218, if I wanted to learn how malware works under the hood, is there a way to do it safely, like with a non-networked system like a Raspberry Pi or something else? So how do you, how do you learn how to... <laughs> how do you learn how, how to clean how malware? To attack, how to attack uh, people on the internet safely. Wait. No, that's not what he's saying. <laughs> I, I think, it, like many of us, just running anti-malware can be anticlimactic because you like you run it, and most of the time they do a pretty good job. You know, so I think what you're actually trying to ask here is, can I download a virus and try to clean it manually by going through registry edits sure. and stuff like that? And the answer is yes. Uh, there are fake viruses out there. Uh, the uh, test test virus. It's been a while since I've done this. Test malware. Apparently, apparently we're buffering. Sorry. You can uh, unbuffer us by changing your resolution. So. Sorry. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Uh, look for any anti malware test file. That's the magic word to look for. Test file. And they let you download. Uh, That didn't look right. They let you download. That's because it still has a tag on it. I want people to know how much I paid for it. Oh, gosh. <laughs> uh, no, it's, uh, so these test files allow you, they'll, they'll run with anti-malware, or they'll also do the same, same functions. They show up in the same places. It, if you're comfortable manually editing a registry, you can clean a lot of malware out in Windows, a lot. Uh, but again, you know, this is one of these things where you do it a couple of times and then it's like, why? Just, you know, I think what's more interesting is going around to different people who pretty much everybody has malware and going around and just saying, you want me to clean this up for free and trying different kinds of bootable 
live CD kind of disc right, right. and come up with the best anti-malware solution you have. Don't ask me, because I get frustrated. Uh, anti-malware changes so quickly these days that uh, I pretty much, every, the few times I actually get caught with malware anymore, which isn't that common anymore, uh, I don't know which product to use. I'm always going right back to the malware well. Malware bites. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Sorry. There, that's, that's, that's where we go. Um, I think you already answered this question at 223. Uh, Andrew Parrish had a question on how long would be too long at a help desk position? I'm sure. Two one, years. Two, yeah. One year or close isn't as bad, say, approaching as say approaching two years. So. But even if you're if you're at a help desk and you're there for two years, if you get up to like tier three support, see that's different. Yeah, you know, because I mean, going up, if you're if you're like at the straight up level one tech support where you've got a script and you're saying, uh, did you reboot your machine? Did you know? Okay, that's that's one level of tech support. Uh, going beyond that just means you've got more skills and you can go well beyond. Um, so yeah, I mean, being in, in top help desk stuff, you could be there for quite a while. It's needed. Yeah, but you know, I, I, I think people like to look for evolution. That's all I'm trying yeah. to say. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, where did I see a okay. question? Teacher Russell at 242. Can you explain a little bit how AFU trim works? No, I, what's AFU? Uh, I know what trim is. What? 242, Teacher I, Russell. You can talk about trim for like SSDs? Uh, accelerator functional unit. Uh, a hardware accelerator implemented in FPGA logic, which offloads a computational operation for an application from the CPU. Where are you getting all this? Uh, from Dave Brush. He's like posting, he's doing research in the background. Oh. Because, you know, that's what we do. Yeah, Teacher Russell, I apologize. I am not familiar. And once you start saying... With an AFU? You know. Yeah, I, I, I could talk about trim. AP, sorry, APU type. APU. As opposed... Oh, he means... Uh, the AMD equivalent to NVIDIA's GPU, I think, is APU. Is what I think he's saying. Teacher Russell, you're going to have to do better than that. Uh, Kim Jong Oof. All right. Well, my question, Grandpa. What the hell? Why, you, why does he call you Grandpa? I don't care. Actually, I am a Grandpa. It's well, all right. Well, I guess that's why he calls you Grandpa. I'm a Grandpa enjoying, enjoying his East Indies goods. Strong coffee. Uh, other. No, wait, wait, wait. So this is a classic question. In fact, I should let Tolowit answer this. <laughs> All right. Well, my question, Grandpa, is: Is it okay to learn SY0501 because a Udemy course? But I saw there's a six one still be useful. Yes. All right. So the, the the bottom line is is that there's always, and this isn't just for CompTIA certifications, pretty much all certified bodies sure. will have some amount of overlap between an old test and a new test. And right now we're in that overlap with the SY0501 and 601. The SY0501 is going to be good for three more months. Yeah. July, right? Right. All right. July. So three and a half more months. And uh, nobody will ever ask you which version of a test you took. They may ask you what year you took it to get a relative idea, right. but no one's going to care. The bottom line is, is that the SY0501 has been around for two and a half years. We kind of have a better feel of the exam than we do with the SY0601. So you always take the older exam. Always. It doesn't, and again, this isn't just for CompTIA. It's for any certification. Kim Jong Un. Well, I need a refund. No, nah, what do you need a refund for? I guess he already bought it. Did he buy it from me? I, I don't know. Or, or his boss bought it for him. So it, um, here's a question. Uh, one of the Andrew Hutzman's from a while ago, two twenty-five. Um, Andrew asked Mike. A friend of mine was talking about Mac OS being better for virtualization than Windows or Linux but didn't really seem to have a reason. Is there an advantage or is it a matter of user preference? I'm unaware of any large cloud provider who uses Macs as the... Virtualization platform? Yeah. So, well, I mean, they're all using uh, type one hypervisors anyway. It's probably right. a bad example. Right. Uh, I, wouldn't, 
I wouldn't say that. I, I wouldn't say no either. What, the right answer is I don't know enough about Macs. I don't look at Macs as a virtualization platform. Of course they can do that. I understand that. Sure. You all got Parallels? Is that still around? Uh, yes. <laughs> I don't know, man. Say it with confidence, Scott. <laughs> hey. <laughs> it's not like I use a Mac, man. Yeah. I just pretend. Because I no. have an iPhone. I, no, I, the, I, I don't agree with that. I think both Linux and Windows are probably better platforms. One would be cheaper. That would be an open source. <laughs> And the other would be proprietary. It's slightly expensive, but pretty well established. Plus, it comes with their own uh, hypervisor, too. So, you know, if you want to do the whole Hyper-V thing. And uh, what about the um, Linux subsystem that's built into Windows 10? I don't know if that would affect virtualization. I don't know. I don't think so, though. Okay. All right. So, 227, Luis Garcia asks, Hey Mike, studying for A+, plus. the more I study, the dumber I feel. I'm trying to understand a DNS server. Is it like a phone book? When would you set an IP address versus automatic? When, when would you, okay, so two, two questions. Let's deal with the what, first one. Yeah, what's a DNS server? Okay, well, uh, uh, yeah. DNS is the uh, domain name services. It is a protocol which allows us to instead of when we want to access a computer, whether it be a web server or a file server or whatever, so instead of using things like HTTP colon whack whack, you know, 1.2.3.4, we can think halfway human being sounding stuff like www.micserver.com. I mean, okay. that's why DNS exists is because as human beings, we stink at numbers, but we do pretty good with human sounding words. Right, like totalsim.com. Yeah. Just so a DNS server is a physical thing, and and there are hundreds of thousands, if not low millions, of DNS servers out there. Different. It's a hierarchical system. So let's make it simple. Let's say you have a small network. Forget that. Let's say you're at your house and you have an ISP. That ISP provides you a DNS server. That DNS server is not used to name your computer because you, most of the time your computer isn't public, but it allows you to talk to the public computers. It allows you to go to www.google.com. It allows you to go to ftp.microsoft.com. You know, it allows you stuff you don't see. It allows your mail server to go to mail.totalsem.com, right? Okay. Uh, so when you click, when you open up a web browser, you go www.gmail.com. The first thing that happens is your local DNS server is queried because in your computer, type ipconfig, type ipconfig slash all, so you can see it all, but you'll see that you have a set DNS server which either came through statically or via DHCP. So your computer will automatically query your DNS server. Now this DNS server may just be at your local ISP's uh, central office. Uh, and, and in that case, it queries the DNS server. It says, do you know who www.totalsem.com is? And it goes through this DNS thing. Or it may have it cached and answer you instantly. So DNS servers are real things that store uh, lookup zones, forward and reverse lookup zones, mm -hmm. for us to be able to deal with this. You don't need DNS servers. If you could memorize all the IP addresses, you could get away with uh, I mean, there's a few situations. Okay. Okay, so the second half of the question was, when would you use a static versus a dynamically uh, assigned IP address? Pretty much, if you have a server that people are accessing a lot, or, or, or a camera, which is a server, to me a sure. camera is a server. It's just the resource is a video image, mm -hmm. not a web page. Or a file server, which, you know, it's not a web page, it's C colon backslash, you know, users backslash Scott backslash important stuff to share. So whenever you have a system that you're going to be going to again and again, a printer, great example, mm -hmm. use static addresses. For the rest of us, there's DHCP. DHCP makes life easy. Yeah, but easy DHCP here. can change. And yeah. that, that can be frustrating That's for the those. That's like dynamic part of it, right? <clears throat> well, I mean, the thing is, is that especially if you're, 
You know, people forget you can set up a local DNS server in your network. There's absolutely nothing wrong about this. Right. And what you do is you set up your DNS server and you can set up this DNS server and set up A or quadruple A records for all your local stuff. Mm -hmm. And if you're using Windows DHCP, this is Active Directory probably, if you're using Windows DHCP and you're using Windows DNS as part of Active Directory, they automatically update themselves. So if your printer suddenly gets a new IP address, it's okay because the, it, the DHCP server reports to the DNS server and anytime you need to get to that uh, printer, you still go to printer1.west.houston.totalsem.com or however it's set up. Okay, so why is it half the time on my home network with my wireless printer, it doesn't print? Well, first of all, <laughs> using wireless for printers is insanity, in my opinion. Uh, I don't like, I have, I don't, the only time I like wireless is with laptops and uh, smart devices. Uh, but that means I have to pull cable, right? which right. I'm going to do. Uh, I think that a lot of wireless devices, not just printers, lose their snap. You know, people forget that these are Soho equipment, yeah, all right? Yeah. You take the same thing and put a $2,000 Hewlett Packard industrial weight office printer in there, and I don't think you'd have the same problem. And I guarantee you could configure it wirelessly. Wait, so does that mean, Mike, that you're gonna buy me a new printer for my house? Sure. Ah. <laughs> uh. You said that with such conviction. Yeah, you get a large salary, too. <laughs> See, now here, I always do this. I give an opinion. Now, here's Eric at 257. I'm wireless to my Canon printer, and it's flawless. Oh, man. Every, every, seriously, every wireless printer I've ever had just is flaky. But you have an uncanny ability to stuff up, you know? <laughs> I have a tiara. I'm just saying. It's a tiara. All right, let's make sure we, I, I know we've skipped some questions here. We, we have skipped some questions, absolutely. And apparently we've been buffering, so again. Sorry, we are, um, uh, we're working. What time are you at? Uh, I'm, I'm at like 2.40. Okay, go. You're on it. You're, you're the boss. Um, okay. <laughs> you asked for it. Here we go. Uh, at 2.39 p.m., Alex asks, can you explain this? Quote, I think she's quoting us. The single loss expectancy oh, is God. equal to the asset value times the exposure factor for any one particular instance. Single loss expectancy. I got. I need. I got to. I got. I can't do this in my head. <laughs> Hang on, Alex. What, what's the question? So SLE Can you explain it? equals what? Asset value times exposure factor for an incident. Ah, okay, sure, asset value times exposure factor. All right, so uh, so SLE is a single loss expectancy. Whatever this, if this router goes down, how much is it gonna cost me in real dollars to bring her back up? Okay, all right. All right. So the asset value, how much does a router cost? It's worth a thousand bucks, all right? So the exposure factor. a thousand dollars for a router? I, I buy good routers. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. $1,000. So the exposure factor, oh God, the exposure factor is the, I can do this, I can do this. I have faith in you. Exposure factor is the cost of repair times the amount of time it can happen. I don't have it in front of me. It's the, so exposure factor, Alex, is two values. It is the cost. How much is it going to cost to get this router back online? And not, talk, not necessarily just talking about the value of it. It's it's not just how much the router is. It's like, right. well, we got to get somebody in here, and yeah. yeah, yeah. that comes in, and then uh, how often can this happen? Well, actually, that's not true. It's just the cost of of, of bringing it back online. Because then you take the single loss expectancy times the annual probability, and then you get the annual loss expectancy, which is usually the number that most risk management people use. Okay, all right. Woo, I can't believe I pulled that one wow, off. Wow, right? <laughs> yeah. Good thing I'm cute. <laughs> Next. <laughs> oh, crap. I sat here and said we need questions, and now... I, uh, they're, they're pouring in. There we Absolutely. go. All right, let's do this. It's 3 o'clock. We're only halfway done. Uh, well, 
Oh, well, okay then. Uh, English. Two, two. Uh, 240, Andrew Hutz followed up with his... Uh, oh no, not Andrew. Uh, yeah, Andrew. Um, he's working on a computer science degree and trying to work security into that direction. Uh, I'd like to learn how malware works at a coding level. But yeah. I don't want to get lost like it's Jurassic Park. Andrew, we're probably not the guys for you. Keep in mind that, you know, most of the, like CompTIA+, Plus, Net+, Plus, and even Security+, Plus are really designed more for you know, what I call meatball uh, support, getting it up and running and moving. And uh, so, yeah, I, I'm probably, I would not be a good expert. I know that there are lots of tools out there for people who are not really writing malware, but writing anti-malware. Right. Because what's interesting is writing anti-malware is pretty much the same as writing malware. Really? Oh yeah. Nice. Most malware is not original. You very rarely see original malware. Most of it, somebody takes something that's already out there and they tweak it a little bit. Allegedly. Allegedly. We don't actually know how to write malware. I do not know how to write malware. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I'm caught up somewhat on the questions. There's several more towards the end. I'm working on it. Uh, Zach Morrill says he's been uh, away for a couple weeks visiting family and left his laptop charger behind. I've used that excuse before. I've done it. <laughs> <laughs> and when we do it, we're, at, we're actually teaching a two-week class. We just go buy a new laptop. Just saying. But yeah. I get, I, mine's usually I'll say something like, ah, I forgot my acoustic coupler. Nobody knows what an acoustic coupler is. No. What, what's an acoustic coupler, Mike? So, do you know? No. It's like with the old telephones, you used to drop the receiver into an acoustic coupler and that would go through your modem. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. That's like the technology of your forefathers. No. Oh. <laughs> I used them. Well, because what would happen is back in the old days, not everybody had modular plugs. Forget internet, okay? This is okay. We're talking this is like dial up BBSs and well, I mean, there's some internet, but you know, or, or re like remote connections. And if I would run into somebody, whoop, wait, wait, hold on. There's a question up here. <laughs> I'm having such a hard time. And of course, Dave, Dave is um, being very helpful. Thank you. Um, the the movie War Games from early '80s. What about it? Had an acoustic coupler. Oh, ah, okay. Yeah, so. uh, Jason Helms at 243. Mike, can you explain the difference between refresh rate versus response time? So I got to be careful here. I, I guess he's talking about in uh, monitors. Monitors. So it, uh, when we're talking about a refresh rate versus response, ooh, let me make sure I got this right. So refresh rate's easy. That's basically the amount of time it takes to draw a page. Right. So, oh, well, I do know that. Yeah, re yeah, it's very different. So, response time, uh, which is going to be 60 hertz, 120 hertz. That's refresh rate. Response time in milliseconds. Ref yeah, refresh rate. Refresh rate is how long, and that's going to be that. Response time is a once a signal has been given to the monitor to move a pixel to one state or another, how long does it take to do that? And that's usually in milliseconds three milliseconds or some of the really fast right. ones now, sure. five to eight milliseconds. Mm -hmm. So one more time, the refresh rate is how long does it take to make a whole screen of pixels. Response time is the amount of time it takes in milliseconds to get one pixel to go to whatever state you asked it to go to. All right, here we go. And this is us scrolling for questions. That's exactly what we're doing. Yeah, we are, we are looking for questions, and uh, I'm talking, chattering so that it's not dead air. There we go. Because this is kind of like radio, and you don't want dead air. So what's, what's with the hats, Mike? I don't know. I like hats. Don't you think I look good in this hat, I Scott? I think you look glorious Mr. in that Mr. Vice hat. President? I think you look glorious in that hat. Uh, you can give me trouble. Maybe they don't like that hat. Maybe they need a more amusing hat. Oh, 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 really? Are you, you're, you're going there. 
You went there. <clears throat> this is the first time I've ever had this hat on. Sober. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which. It's Mardi Gras, baby. Somebody asked. Voulez-vous bon ton relais? Much earlier in the stream, what's your favorite drink? My favorite drink? Yeah. The one that I've got. The one that's with me. Uh, I'm a scotch or a bourbon drinker usually. I just drink straight scotch or bourbon. Neat with a couple of ice cubes. Uh, Belvini, 14-year uh, Caribbean cast for scotch. For bourbon, it's probably regular Maker's Mark. I don't like Maker's Mark 46 or anything. I think they taste weird. Cocktail. God, think about it. Harvey Wallbanger. Oh, my gosh. No, we're in, we're in, we're in Houston, Texas. I bought Galliano. No, I, I, don't, I, I don't like tequila. Oh, here, Scott's really going to get mad at me on this one. You know why I don't like tequila? Why, I'm, why don't you like tequila? I like? don't ever drink anything that I've ever blown out of my nose. <laughs> uh, Dave, Spring break, 1985, Dave, Dave, South Padre. Just, just delete oh, this, it's funny. This section. <laughs> okay, so at 2.52. Now, Teresa... 2.50. Teresa, I keep seeing Teacher Russell, and I think Teresa Russell. That's just two different things. I know it is. Radically different. Where are you? What time? Uh, 2.48. Oh, okay. Available for use. That's what AFU stands for. You know what? I think, I don't think we've ever done a trim video before, have we? Uh, teacher, teacher Russell, I'm not trying to avoid your question, but I have a pretty good uh, demo for trim. And uh, I mean, Scott, can we write that down or something yeah. to remember? Yep. Uh, I am going to. Uh, or no, if maybe. That's all right. I'll, I'll write it down. I brought no notepad, which is weird. So we're. I want to do a trim class. There's not that much to do, to be honest with you, but it's it's interesting to see. There you go. I'm going to memorize that, huh? Mm. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Teresa Russell, we'll talk about trim on Monday. That would be Teacher Russell. Just saying. What did I just say? Teresa again. God bless it. <laughs> it's really stuck in my brain. So 250, uh, Alex asks, can you explain the concept of advanced persistent threat? Uh, sure. Uh, serious security plus land here. Well, I mean, it's the this is all definitional stuff on security plus. I mean. You'd have to be looking at your, you know, CISA or some of those more advanced certs to get into that stuff. But at least at a Security Plus level, advanced persistent threat basically means that somebody is not only trying to, you know, get into your stuff, but they want to stay there over a long period of time. Because a lot of times, even stuff like data flows and things like that that don't really catch ourselves as a problem. Mm -hmm can start to bring up interesting data if you can look at it over an extended period of time. Right. And uh, for the for the exam, just remember that most advanced persistent threat comes from state actors. State actors. Yeah. And by state actors, we mean the Russians hacking our- The North Koreans. <laughs> hacking our elections. Yeah. Good stuff. Uh, 2.49 PM, depressed peach. Any advice on staying motivated studying? Yeah, depressed speech. Just show up here Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Dave Rush is on Fridays at 2 o'clock with his Dave Rush AMA, D-R-A-M-A -A, drama. And sometimes it's drama plus S because I show up on the feed as well. <laughs> Drama plus Oh, my God. I know, right? <laughs> but seriously, the, the best thing you can do for yourself is be around other motivated people. And... Uh, We've got tons of motivated people here. And on top of that, we also have what well, we don't, but my buddy uh, Jose Braden has a Discord channel. Let me post the link. Uh, Scott Jernigan's going to post that Discord channel to you. Uh, the Discord channel is not a Total Seminars channel. It's not a Mike Myers channel. I don't have any control over it. Jose does. Uh, but a lot of the people you see here on the AMA also show up on the Discord channel. Uh, it's been growing nicely. Uh, it's a great place to just throw in a question. Whether there's a lot of people on or not, it doesn't matter. Just throw in a question and you'd be surprised. Uh, usually within an hour, pretty much any question gets answered these days. So it's, it's getting better and better. So that's how you stay motivated. Hang out with motivated people. And we are your motivated people and we want you here. So I just posted the 
the link to the unofficial Total Seminar Discord channel hosted by our friend Jose. Um, that link is probably good for uh, at least today. If you're watching this live stream, uh, not live, like in the, in the archives uh, a little later on, then just do a search for unofficial Total Seminars channel and you should be able to find it on Discord. Two. It's fun because Discord is cool because we can see you too. And that's cool. So it's, it's, and, and it's a good, two way interaction. Yeah, if you have a camera and a microphone, you can actually you know, communicate. Absolutely. That is good. Absolutely. Uh, 2.55 p.m. Evan dub doubled. Evan doubled. Serious question. How difficult would the Net Plus be? I find the Network Plus to be relatively easy. Now, I, you know, I have a lot of comfort on this. Okay, how many years have you been doing networking, Mike? Of Close course, to network. 40. Yeah, of course networking is easy. Uh, but the thing is, is that I think it's interesting. The Network Plus is interesting. I, uh, I don't find things to be difficult when they're interesting. Okay. It just, you know, the more motivated you are, you know, I mean... What did I take that was difficult and uninteresting? Differential equations. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, so that was the last math course I ever took was Diff EQ. And uh, eh, some parts of that were interesting, too. The D part and the Q part? Well, no, no. Actually, it, like things like you, you'll never understand how a computer can calculate a cosine if you don't understand differential equations. It's this thing called a Laplace transform. They're fascinating. But the, the thing is, is that... Uh, for me, it's a lot of fun. Uh, I haven't run into lots of people, Evan, who say Net Plus is really hard. Uh, I think it's really, if you want to understand how networks work and you do that, a side effect of that knowledge will be you can easily pass the Network Plus. Probably take a big chunk out of a CCNA, too. Oh, tell it. Mike is the mini pearl of Total Sim. Yeah. Oh, because I have the tag? Because you left the tag. Tolowin, you just really aged yourself out of about 75% of the people on here. <laughs> That's all right. Oh, oh, and, and, and then he just went totally I SDA. saw it. Just, oh, what That's he, not the right crown for an AOA. He, he's in the SCA? <laughs> You're right. I need a little tiny circlet. Shannon, would you be willing to get my kettle helm? <laughs> oh, gosh. We're, we're going. We're going there today. You guys started this. Oh man, it's just all about the hats. Well, I'm actually good. We, uh, we're we're even though Dan Lachance is going to be the primary presenter for this I mean, new you're security, doing plus, all of the security I'm do, plus. I'm doing color commentary. Absolutely. You know, I get to do fun, stupid stuff. Dan gets to slog through all the, you know, EAP versions. Right. Yeah, you know, right. I'm at the one. Eat, Pete. There we go. Uh, uh, thank you. Here we go. producer is hiding from the camera. Because yeah, she isn't pretty enough. All right. She's gorgeous. What do you think? I think you look great, Mike. Yeah, so it may look a little rusty, but uh, this is... It's the, a lot rusty. It's a lot rusty. It's heavy. So this it thing normally heavy. comes with a big face guard. Yeah. And the face guard actually balances it better. Because mm. right now it's a little top boot. <laughs> <laughs> he broke his neck on live TV. <laughs> he, he, was, he felt good. He was feeling happy again. He turned his head. You know, he's dead. He's dead. Scott Jernigan's dead. doing the AMAs. There's only three people watching him. <laughs> yeah, right, so, here, let me take I, so I actually no, I actually wore this to... Uh, Renaissance Festival. No. Uh, uh, Jabberwocky, the... To a Monty Python festival? It was a Monty Python where they were just singing. All, it was Jabberwocky, I think was the name of it. It was a touring thing, and they all would sing, we're the Knights of the Round Table, we dance and we are able to do routines. Da, 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 da. I have to push the prom a lot. <laughs> anyway, so I wore this hat and a tuxedo. Oh, good Lord. And I'm just trying to be fun, you know, sort of there, wearing this. And all of a sudden, so we're all sitting down. And the lights start to go down. Show starting, right? Well, I don't want to wear this helmet. It could be people behind me who can't see. Sure. So I take the helmet <laughs> and I drop it on this concrete floor in front of me, and it's like this clank, <laughs> and the entire auditorium's like, Bleh! 
<laughs> Everybody was laughing because they knew exactly what happened. I mean, there was no question mark whatsoever. Just like that. Yeah, except a lot louder. <laughs> In a quiet, quiet auditorium. All right, let's have another competition. You guys ready for another one? Yes. Let's do. I'm ready. All right, let's do this. All right, and uh, Kim Jong wanted uh, us to do a an A plus question, so we will do an A plus question. All right, we're gonna do an A plus question. Here we go. Here we go. And uh, this is the contest for those of you who are not in the know. Uh, the contest will be not fair. Um, it'll be decided by whatever thing shows up. Whoever answers the question uh, and shows up in my feed. And Patricia's already said that if she wins, she's going to compete. She's like, go ahead and pass it on to somebody else. So that's cool. And that's the other question. The other thing. Go ahead and, and jump in and answer the question. Make sure you don't just type in a letter, but type in the actual answer. Or at least enough of the answer so we know what you're talking about. Right. And um, if you don't want the prize but are just competing, just say that. In fact, even better, if you don't want the prize, wh when you type in the answer, say no prize or right. something. Okay. All right, question is up. Do, 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 do. A network printer is not printing for any of the users, okay? Jobs are showing in the queues of the local machines. All right, I can almost guarantee you this machine's not connected or something's wrong with the oh, machine. Zoom in, zoom in on the, on the, on the question. Okay. So they cannot see this as beautifully it's, it's, as they? It's too small. Really? All right. Uh, let me double check. Yeah, it's small. You can zoom in a little bit. Hang on. The problem is if I make it bigger, it gets harder to fit. All right, can you guys, I hope you guys can see that one. All right, let me read through this question. All right, so the printer's not working. Nobody can get to it. Everybody's cues are starting to back up. It's got plenty of paper. Toner cartridge is full, so nothing easy. Printer display shows ready. Wow, so the printer display. All right, I don't think there's anything wrong with the printer. There's got to be spooler is my quick guess here. A technician's been able to connect. So the laptop's talking, it's got to be the spooler. Is that, okay, B, review that the printer's print spooler service is running properly. Do we have answers? Um, we, we have answers already. All right, what, I, I'm pretty sure. What's your, what's your, what's your response? I'm saying it's the spooler. Let's see if I'm right. Boy, you think I wrote these questions or something. Right, and guess who won? Patricia? No. She Kim Jong-oof? Yep. Kim Jong-oof. <laughs> awesome. All right, Kim Jong-oof, congratulations to you, sir. You are the winner. Kim Jong-oof, in order to claim your prize. Scott, can people see this? Uh, I don't know. I don't have my usual toys here. There we go. There you go. Okay. Kim Jong-oof, in order to receive your prize, send an email to Kathy Y at totalsem.com. In that email, be sure to mention your YouTube name, which product you want, A+, plus, Net+, plus, or Security+, plus. and please give Kathy a couple of weeks. She's only one person, and we're a little tiny mom and pop, so we get a little busy. I don't have a He's mom. I'm pop. That one already. I was That's going to okay. make some kind of joke about it. <laughs> <laughs> Certain Theodore Geisel uh, <laughs> book called Hop on Pop, but, you know, whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Really? Why not? We're going with it. Come on, this is the original. Uh, I used to drum for you in this hat. <laughs> nice. We well, oh, and we buffered right after the mom and pop joke. Oh, well. So. Good. Oh, well. Worked out far. Yep. Better for us. And then we had hats, so, you know, it's all good. This is the funny part. You know that my home internet connection is better than the one we have here at Total Seminars? So is mine. Are you running lot, gigabit yeah, now too? Oh my gosh! Tons better. It's like rocks and okay, I'm stones. Trying type, I'm trying to type. Stop talking to me. <laughs> uh, to collect your prize. Wait, you have to keep talking though. I, I'm just reading. I'm just reading. 
Uh, Andrew Hutz, Mike is a hardware enthusiast. This is a 256. As a hardware enthusiast and screwdriver tech, am I going to have to expect lots of my fellow programmers to ask me to fix their computers? Dude, it ain't going to be your fellow anything. Doctors, auto mechanics, and computer people are the three people, if you show, tell them who you are at a party, they're going to ask for free help. There's so, always somebody who's like, oh, my hard drive. <laughs> yeah, well, the answer is, ever read Mike's Ten Commandments, don't give it away for free, right? Uh, never provide, and not only that, never provide unsolicited tech support. I had a family Zoom call, siblings, my parents, etc., uh, and and their, their children. Yes. Um, Several of my siblings. Siblings. Siblings are medical doctors. <laughs> yeah, I think we're past that one. Oh, God. All right. So everybody's telling us we're buffering. And by telling us we're buffering, that gives us more traffic to do more buffering. All right. Yep. Okay, I think we're back now, guys. Sorry about that. All right, so I think we're, are we running out of questions again? Looks like we are. Oh, well. Yeah, okay, thank you, Jason. I, it, it looked like we had another bad buffer. Not sure what's going on here. I, uh, I just think we might be asking a lot out of our, our internet uh, connection. <coughs> Choco Taco, hey, Choco Taco. Here's somebody we haven't seen for a while. Yeah, good to see you. Yeah, uh, is that the great Mike Stromey? Dang right it is. Mike Stromy? Mike Stromy. Yep. All right, guys, so a couple of things. Number one, remember, uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. Looks like things are slowing down a little bit. So remember, this Friday, Dave Rush will be having his, I don't know, what, what, Dave, what are you doing this week? Uh, the Friday drama yes. is, uh, Dave is finishing with the uh, how, to, how, to run, how to run games on a Raspberry Pi. So setting up Steam games that are based on Linux x86 architecture gotcha. running oh. on a Raspberry Pi, which is cool. But you're going to need a Raspberry Pi 4B for any of this stuff. Uh, oh, we do have one little quick question. Uh, 323, Hashling Lasher. What? Something like that, 3.23 p.m. Okay. Any tips on building a wall-mounted computer? I like the way they look, but I only built in case PCs. There's no difference. Uh, a wall-mounted computer is in like a monitor on the wall? or I'm not sure what he's talking about in that case, but uh, it, uh, I have seen... I have, the wall-mounted systems I've seen are... And we're not like talking rack-mounted systems. We're talking uh, like they have a big... Uh, like a big old 60 inch TV. Right. And they want to put the, the, the case in essence someplace. Uh, or, or like an all in one PC or a Mac that, that you can mount on the wall. Macs? They have a Mac you can mount on a wall? Sure. I do not speak this Mac you language. You do not speak the Mac language. I, I am a PC overlord. Yeah, and yes, Catherine, buffering is when we, is when we lag. Um, um, and we get the little spinning circle. Yes, absolutely. Yes, absolutely, Catherine. You, yeah, so buffering is what we do to try to deal with lag, right? Right. So we're, we're not getting enough signal, so we try to buffer up enough ahead of time so that we can keep giving it to you without. Yeah. Right. Because it's already our lag time. We're 10, 15 seconds ahead of you. So by the time you're hearing this, we've already gone on to yeah. the three paragraphs. So, so uh, on this wall mount, he's talking about all the hardware on the wall, monitors on the desk. I'm not aware of any cases that are designed to do that. I've seen custom rigs, okay, yeah, which are, they're just doing it. That. They're doing it for art. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, they can be very beautiful, especially now with RGB is now pretty much trivial, especially with AMD based motherboards. I, I, haven't, I have not done RGB on an Intel-based motherboard. I haven't used an Intel-based sure motherboard in several years at this point. Been a while for me, too. <laughs> uh, but you can really make some very attractive nice. stuff by doing that. But I'm not aware of anything special. Andrew Hutz, did they announce the specs? I have no idea what that's. Uh, 
I think that might be going back to the DDR5 question that we skipped. Um, there was a DDR5 um, question? DDR5 question. I um, didn't see it. From 319, Ryan Westbury. Mike, what do you think about the transition to DDR5 this year? What industries do you think will adopt and benefit? <sighs> From this video customer. video cards. I mean, that's always the first well, people. We're we're already we're at GDDR5. Yeah, but the, video, but we're talking about DDR5 for motherboards. Do you remember what GDDR5 is versus regular DDR5? I am quizzing you. Faster. Why? <laughs> There's a subtle thing about graphics. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. It's dual ported. Oh. You 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 know with classic RAM, you can. You know, send a row address and a column address strobe, and then all you can do is wait. And there's literally one wire that goes to a one or a zero, right? But with a, a graphical uh, DDR, you literally can send in a command while you, you're getting the answer to the other one. It's basically all. All, it is. I, all I have to say is that my graphics card, if I have a choice between getting DDR or getting GDDR, I'm going to go with the latter. Because it's faster. Well, you're never going to find a, 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 a motherboard that does regular DDR. It would make no sense. A, a motherboard. General purpose RAM is never going to be GDDR. That's correct. That's correct. Well, I mean, you never know. My, somebody might invent something new, but generally, no. I don't get excited about new versions of, of DDR. Uh, What's usually going to happen is that you're going to get new CPUs that are going to demand a certain level of uh, card uh, RAM support, and I'm just going to go with that. Uh, I have not read anything particularly noteworthy on DDR5 in terms of, you know, lowering latency or, you know, this is a big problem we have with all these, you know, starting with, I'd say, DDR3, uh, certainly 4, and, and, and 5 probably is... You know, latency is always a big issue, right. and uh, I'm surprised that we haven't gone back to triple channel just to try to bring latency back down. But you know, I guess dual channel is good enough, and my computer seems to run plenty fast, so I don't know. I don't worry about that. Yes. Yeah, so, absolutely, we are. So, a couple things to mention. Um, yes, we're we're on dial up here at uh, Total Seminars um, because we're in our orbital headquarters. Um, we're not just dial-up, we're on satellite, so... <laughs> it's not quite that bad. <laughs> Compared to our homes, where both Mike and I are running uh, fiber... Yeah, gigabit fiber in our houses. So well, we're inner-city Houstonians, and now we're actually at a part... I don't know, when you drive out to our office, there's a little place you have to pull over, and they hand you a banjo. So, uh... <laughs> <we're>, <laughs> you sure got a pretty mouth! Okay. Please don't cancel me. Please don't cancel me. <laughs> he said mouth. That's reprehensible behavior. What is the box? Okay, hold on. Uh, oh, the second thing is I'm going to put the unofficial Discord link. Uh, it's the unofficial Total Seminars Discord channel where a lot of people will hang out, uh, certainly directly after the AMAs, um, both Monday, Wednesday with Mike and on Fridays with Dave. Um, a lot of us will show up there just kind of randomly. Uh, I will put that link up shortly here. We'll do it like nowly because we're about to wrap up. I, I'm doing it nowly. Guys, it's been fun. It does. <laughs> Wait, you get, a, you get an answer. answer. What am I missing? 329. What is the box? It's a Commodore 64. It's original Commodore 64 in the box. Uh, I collect old computers, always have. In fact, I, basically what I do is not throw away computers. <laughs> <laughs> and I actually keep boxes. Because we're geeks, right? I mean, seriously. So Chaco Taco, what is happening, by the way? New sermon R streaming setup? Chaco Taco, we're trying stuff. But I got to tell you, we've done just a few episodes here, and the connection's terrible. Yeah, it, it, it is pretty terrible. I, I have to be down here at the office because we're shooting new videos for the upcoming Security Plus. But uh, I'll be done next week. We may just move back up to my house. Yeah. Especially if you're going to start becoming sociable again. I, I get second shot tomorrow, man. Just saying. Philip B. Want to say hi, Mike. Hey, Philip B. Welcome aboard, man. 
Andre's like, move back to the house. All right, guys, we are out of here. Folks, thank you so much. Uh, good, good, good stuff to answer, good competitions. Uh, be sure to see Dave. Uh, remember to like and subscribe. It's always a big plus for us, even though we're not here to really make money. It's just a, helps with the advertising. And it's just, it's for fun. Yeah. I mean, and it helps, it helps people be able to search. Andrew Parrish, Mike, can I move to your house? If you're good at doing laundry, yes. Otherwise, forget about it. All right, Scott, are we done? I think we are done. Oh, we're done. So Guys, thank you so much for putting up with us. We are out the door. Uh, I've got to run. Are you going to be on the Discord channel today? Uh, I can't. Uh, maybe. In fact, oh, God. Yeah, no, we're, yeah. We're, we're done. Yeah, we're <laughs> done. All right, guys, we will see you all on Monday. Be good. And until we see you on Monday. Whoa. Bye, guys. Bye. And now if this were Dave and me, we'd have the awkward stare at the moment. But just saying. No, what I'm finally...